as we all know, this topic is Vaishnava etiquette. And I will call upon names also in between to read some things. So it's such an important topic. Here we see this picture of how Krishna himself is showing by his own example on how he's treating or welcoming and giving mark of respect to his own dear friend, Sudama Brahman, Vipra, Vipra Sudama. So we can see that this, this, this is one of the most, most important topics. Um, and hence, I request that all of you please give your kind attention for your own benefit. And if you need to take a few minutes, uh, if you come on the screen, it'll be very much be appreciated. So we'll go to the next uh, slide. So the six part session of Vaishnava etiquette is basically taken, broken down into uh, six sessions, broken down into three devotees who will be speaking. First one and the second one by will be done by myself, which is today and next Wednesday. And the topics of this will be, part one will be brief introduction and the essence of Vaishnava etiquette. And part two will be etiquette within the temple and other etiquettes, etiquettes around prashadam and kitchen. The, sec the third and the fourth session will be by His Grace Nimai Karuna Prabhu, and he will be covering part three, which is honoring and serving prashadam, and part four, which is dealings with different categories of devotees, dealings with non-devotees. And the final sessions, five and six, will be by His Grace Ram Tulsi Prabhu, who just made the announcements. And the, this topic would cover two parts, which is sadhana, our own Krishna conscious or spiritual practices, and visiting holy places and ten offenses against the holy dham. Now, I want to be very clear that Vaishnava does not just mean men. It also includes women. So, for example, when we ask some, some people, some ladies, uh, are you Jai? No, no, I'm Vaishnav. So that doesn't mean that they are Vaishnav as in men Vaishnav. Vaishnav means one who's a devotee of Vishnu. It could have several meanings to it. So this applies to both men and women. And in the future, we will probably have more dedicated sessions just for men and just for women, diving deeper into that. Also, I want to put a disclaimer here today. And the disclaimer is this that whatever I speak or three of us speak in the next six weeks is not addressing any individual or individuals or any particular situations that may have in the past. This is basically coming from our own experiences, from the, from the books that we're reading and something that will benefit all of us, including the speaker. So let's go to the next one. So the part one brief introduction and the essence, um, the source of this presentation is from the manual of Vaishnava etiquette and lifestyle. This is a manual that was inspired by His Holiness, Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj. And also uh, the Vaishnava etiquette website, which has tons of information, which was inspired by His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. We've also use nectar of devotion, nectar of instruction, and Hari Bhakti Vilas, which is by one of our Goswamis, uh, Sanatan Goswami. So, yeah, that's the book, Vaishnava Etiquette. You can easily find it in any Vaishnava or temple bookstore. So why is Vaishnava Etiquette very, very, very important. The reason I put three times very is because the same thing was said once, long time ago. Kalo nastyeva 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 gatiranyatha. In this age of Kali Yuga, there is no other way, no other way, no other way, but singing the holy names of the Supreme Lord Hari that can deliver one from this material situation, material body. There's no other way it was said three times. So here also I, I said in the same mood three times that this Vaishnava etiquette is very important in our own um, journey of spiritual growth. Lord Chaitanya said that if you want to develop love for Godhead, you must know Vaishnava etiquette. 
how to behave with Vaishnavas. That is more important. If we don't know how to deal with deal properly with Vaishnavas, then we commit offenses and eventually we won't be able to go very close to Krishna. So it is very important to know how to deal with, behave with each other properly and respectfully. This was from a class uh, from by His Holiness Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj, who was one of our senior sannyasis. And he also said, if you're going to save a Vaishnava who has been attacked by a beast or wild animal, and in that, if you die, trying to save that devotee, then you go back to Godhead. But devotees are so dear that they are worth dying for. Now think about it. So if somebody's worth dying for, then why would we offend or deal improperly, improperly with such a devotee? This was such a powerful statement that I wanted to put as, as one of my first slides. That these are the people who we depend on to deliver us at the final hour. And those are the people we have to deal with them with extra caution and attention. There's another, the foundation. So the, the foundation of Krishna consciousness is also mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Vaishnava etiquette or the whole Vaishnava culture is founded on this principle. May I ask, Raktak Prabhu, to please read this paragraph. Yes, go ahead. The foundation, Vaishnava etiquette of the whole Vaishnava culture is founded on this principle. A Vaishnava should be tolerant like a tree and submissive like grass. Nevertheless, the author of this instruction, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, did not tolerate the misbehavior of Java and Madai when they harassed Nityananda Prabhu. He immediately became angry and wanted to kill them. One should be very meek and humble in his personal transactions. But if there is blasphemy against one's guru or another Vaishnav, one should be angry as far. One should not tolerate blasphemy against a Vaishnava, but should immediately take one of the three actions. If, one, if someone blasphemes a Vaishnava, one should stop him with higher arguments and higher reason. If one is not expert enough to do this, he should give up his life on the spot. And if he cannot do this, he must go away. But we should never listen to blasphemy against a Vaishnava. Thank you very much. Many times devotees get confused. And in the name of Vaishnava etiquette, in the name of, I don't want to come at a prad, in the name of, uh, this is, you know, I don't want to say anything, I just want to be neutral. The devotees end up committing mistakes. For this specific scenario, where Mahaprabhu in this Chaitanya Charitamrita is mentioned, that yes, ideally a devotee should always be humble, meek, do not get into arguments, quarrels, debates. But that's on us. If somebody is 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 pointing finger at you or, or or doing something to you, and this reminds me of an example one of my my Siksha gurus told me in the early days that he was in New York City in the subway. They were distributing books and also doing Hari Nam together. And one person came, and as my Siksha Guru was uh, His Grace Subal Prabhu, I remember this very well, he told me this in, in the early 90s, that while he was just there, he was playing some instrument, this one guy came and stood in front of the book table in front of this devotee. He kept staring at him, and then, uh, and then he spit on him or he did something to hurt that devotee. As soon as that happened, another devotee pounced on him. Now, this devotee pounced on him generally is like a cow, he's very calm and composed and peaceful. But when this happened, he didn't think twice. It was his instinct that how dare you attack a devotee? So we have to understand. We have to become smart. We have to become intelligent. We have to use knowledge. We have to use Shastra. We have to use our, our senior devotees' inputs, not just whimsically think, I think I should not do in this situation or in another situation. What generally happens is when somebody says something to me, I get angry. But when somebody says something to another devotee, which is wrong, I walk away or I don't want to say anything. It should actually be the other way around. If somebody says or insults me, that is the foundation. But it turns out another way. So if we just try to transform that, instead of focusing on myself, 
that I try to focus on other devotees. Then we'll see how much more progress we make and how much more Krishna becomes also more pleased with us in our behavior. So there are different etiquettes according to time, place, and circumstances also. Next slide. And the, the biggest hindrance into our spiritual progress is Vaishnava Prad. It's actually a very dangerous offense. We must be very careful about committing Vaishnava Prad. Srila Prabhupada said this. Going to the next slide. According to time, place, and circumstance, it's very important. So based on, on the country where you are, in, in different countries, you have different ways of greeting each other. Some places you there's handshake. Some places there is hugging each other. Some places it's, sometimes it's kissing on one another's cheeks. Uh, sometimes it's just folding your hands and doing namaste or touching uh, elders' feet. So based on where you are, you generally tend to follow that culture. If we end up doing the same thing, if I go to uh, an, an event where some seniors are, are there from my workplace and I just go and touch my boss's feet, not only that he's senior to me in, in position, but also age, it would be taken uh, in a very negative way. Like, what are you doing? Uh, but at the same time, if you are in, like, for example, in India, and there's a senior person and you just go and just handshake, it's not considered respectful either. So we have to adapt according to that. Same with workplace. There are certain email etiquettes. Uh, we avoid side conversations during a meeting. That's an etiquette to follow. We have to be respectful to individual space. Somebody's in an office or so, we can't just barge in. You have to... You know, so there are these etiquettes to follow. At home at someone else's home, in a restaurant. I mean, imagine eating in a restaurant with, uh, you know, first you take some water in your palm, you say certain mantras, you sprinkle it around your around your plate, then you start loudly, you start saying Mahaprasadam loudly, Prasadam prayers, and then you take your hands and you just start eating. Forget about people around you, even the waiter will be kind of <laughs> like, what's going on here? And when you're at home, uh, you have different etiquettes. You are not relaxed you're you just you know putting your napkin in here and your spoon and fork and proper position and that's where you so according to place and situation you have to adapt your title your position uh, reminds me of where um, once uh, a mother bra came to uh, a guru a, a saintly person and says can you please tell my son to to stop eating uh, spicy food and the guru said uh, uh, yes i will but come back in 15 days. So after 15 days, the mother goes back and takes the child and says, uh, we're back here. Can you please instruct my son? Because he's he's hurting. His stomach is not in good shape. So the guru says, son, you should stop eating spices. And after that, the mother goes to him separately and says, so if you had to say just this much, why didn't you tell that 15 days ago? And the guru said that, well, that's because uh, I myself had to stop first. So I had to practice what I'm preaching. And that's very important in Vaishnava etiquette or achar and sadachar. What is my own practices and am I preaching what I'm practicing? According to different situations and norms, that is also very important. There's another beautiful story around this too, that sometimes people are very much like, you know, I should, this is a standard and, and this is a norm, this is the etiquette that should be followed in every situation. It doesn't work like that. One time when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in Jagannath Puri in Gambira, where he spent a lot of time, a small dark room, and Mahaprabhu was completely tired from uh, doing kirtan all day long. And he just entered and right by the entrance, blocking the entrance, he just laid down and he fell asleep. And at that time, his personal servant, Govinda, came to massage him. And when he saw Mahaprabhu laying down, he just couldn't enter the, the room. And uh, so what he did was he took a piece of uh, a cloth and he covered Mahaprabhu with that and he crossed over Mahaprabhu and he went inside. He stepped over him. It's not, a, it's not an etiquette to step over anybody, any living entity, because the Lord, Supreme Lord, as Paramatma resides. So it, one should always avoid, should not do that, otherwise one will commit a prayer to that person. So after a while, Mahaprabhu, woke up 
and he saw that uh, Govinda is doing massage. So Mahaprabhu then looked where he is, and the road, the door was blocked. And he says, uh, Govinda, uh, did you uh, have prasadam? And Govinda said, uh, No, Mahaprabhu, not yet. Uh, he said, uh, How can I, you know, how can I go? You are you are blocking the road. So Mahaprabhu said, Well, how did you get inside? He says, well, Mahaprabhu, I, I came inside, I crossed over you. <laughs> and so he says, well, then the same way you could have crossed over me and gone back and had prasadam. And Govinda gave such a thoughtful answer. He said, Mahaprabhu, I crossed over you for, for your own benefit, to do massage to you. So I, I, I crossed over you. Now, to have prasadam, that was for, for my own benefit. And I did not want to cross that boundary. Hence, I'm sitting here waiting for you to wake up. You see how beautifully Govinda, in dire situation, it's, it's been hours and hours he hasn't eaten, but he still maintained respect to this etiquette. Same way, there are many instances how Mahaprabhu also, although from the Brahma, Madhava, Gaudiya, Sampradaya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas from Shankarachari Sampradaya under Keshava Bharti. Because at that time, the Shankaracharya or Shankarites, the sannyasis, there were so many of them. And it was considered in society that if you are a Shankarite sannyasi, then you have value. So he didn't hesitate from taking, even Mahaprabhu, who's Krishna himself, didn't even need to take sannyas or even wear saffron robes. But just because if you're in saffron robes, he knew that it's going to be easy to preach, he took that position. Just charging my my laptop, uh, and same way with when Mahaprabhu met King Prataprudra, he could have easily asked uh, that please, uh, King, uh, allow break the rules and allow Haridas Thakur to enter the Jagannath Temple. Haridas Thakur, who was Muslim by birth, was not allowed to enter Jagannath Puri Temple to see Lord Jagannath. And at the instruction of Mahaprabhu, it could have been arranged, but Mahaprabhu followed the social norms of the society and says, well, that's what it is. That's what it'll be. I'm not going to make a special request. So, and then again, spiritual organization. Uh, we have to understand that we are not individual Vaishnavas. We belong to a society, a society which we call International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So whatever etiquettes we follow, our achran will be measured by people outside and within. So there are etiquettes to be followed within the organization and then etiquettes to be followed outside the organization. Uh, organization. For example, there was uh, there, there was one person with a very bad experience uh, staying with somebody, another devotee from another organization. And he says, I will never go to their temple. So why? Because, because you know what? I was a tenant at their house. And the way this person sucked my blood, the way this person treated me, and he was a devotee from this organization, that one person put such an impression on this person that I knew that he never wanted to do anything with that that person. On the other hand, I remember going to one place for preaching and I approached this business and I said, listen, you know, I want to set up some books and do some Harinam with our group outside your business. Can we do it? I said, yes, absolutely. I don't know this person. But he said, you know what? I had such a wonderful experience with one of the Hare Krishna devotee. You guys can do whatever you need. If you need anything else from me, don't hesitate to ask. So this one devotee who I don't even know may left such an impression with, with this uh, business owner that he welcomed us with open hands. So similarly, it depends. It, we have a lot of responsibility on how we interact with devotees. There's one devotee who had a problem with another devotee because of some money matters who was supposed to pay him and, and, and never even brought it up, never even talked about it, never even paid anything for all the services done. And this devotee wanted nothing to do. He said, I'm not listening to this person's lecture. Because on one side, you, you preach. And on the other side, how can you deal like, like this with me on, on money matters? So we have to be very cautious. We cannot take people within the community, outside the community, for granted. Next slide. The essence... Um, The essence is a devotee's lifestyle 
should conform to the principle of simple living and high thinking. May I request somebody to read the rest? Um, how about Rati Dilasa? There are many rules. Um, a devotee's lifestyle should conform to the principle simple, simple living high thinking. There are many rules and regulations guiding a devotee's life, but the purpose of them all is to help us help us to always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. This is the most important rule, and all others are subservient to this rule. Hare Krishna. Right. Thank you. So there is uh, there are these 26 qualities of a devotee mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, of which one is the primary one, which is surrender to Krishna. Always remember Krishna. Everything else is a secondary. How to behave and this and that is all secondary. Sometimes people compare devotees with uh, people who are so-called good people, right? They have all the good manners. Behavior is good. And they would say, you know, that is my standard. But in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is mentioned that unless one is a devotee of the Lord, is a devotee of Vishnu or Krishna, everything else is secondary. It's like zeros before a one. But if one is a devotee and a sincere and a pure devotee, all the other qualities that a so-called good person has or should have are automatically present. So it's not one over the other. It should be everything else, but with that one in front, which is Krishna. Now to always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna, how will that happen? It, it all depends on many factors. What we eat, how we dress, who we associate with, all this matters. Next slide. So there are etiquettes within the temple, which we will start covering now. One is being humble. May I request uh, Sri Harsha Prabhu to please read this? about Somya. So if you're not available, then I'll take it as... Sure, sure Prabhuji. Sorry, I was mm -hmm. muted. Um, in the old days, kings would travel in palaquins. One regulative principle is that one should never enter a temple in a palaquin or a car with shoes on. The idea is one... The idea is that one should give up one's kingly mentality in mentality the Got mentality it. of being the lord and master whatever be one's qualifications abilities and social position amongst the devotees particularly in temple one's only destination is servant of the servant that is a designation servant of the servant das anudas so i remember reading this manual many 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 years ago and I actually, when I entered an ISKCON temple, I really saw that, that people really didn't care so much about who you are, what you do. And I later found out that I had devotees next to me, washing pots with me, who were doctors, who were engineers, who had big, big businesses, or somebody who was a taxi driver. It just didn't matter. What one was respected for was their practice of Krishna consciousness. And that's what we should be doing. When we enter a center or temple or any place, do not take your statuses with you. It will become an hindrance in your own spiritual growth and with people around you. Because as soon as I have a title and somebody says something to me, I want to show them who I am. But if we always remember that here, I am in Srila Prabhupada's, for example, we are all here as gone. I'm, re I'm representing his con, so I'll speak about Prabhupada, that I'm representing Srila Prabhupada. I'm his servant. This is his house. So I leave all my titles outside. We may use that sometimes just to introduce with each other, to connect with each other, but otherwise we should always go in a humble mood. A tree that bears nice, beautiful, strong fruits 
will always bend, you know, like you have mangoes and, and oranges and all, it always bends down. The higher you go, the higher titles you have, the more money you have by Krishna's mercy, beauty, knowledge, fame, any of those qualities that you may have, we must become more and more humble. Otherwise, it will always become dangerous for us. So that is one quality that we must always try and endeavor to have on a consistent basis. The next is offering obeisances. Now we'll go through some of the practical things that needs to be done. This is will be helpful as a reminder, a refresher, and also for those uh, who are new. So upon entering the temple, one should first offer obeisances. Maybe I can have uh, Ashish Prabhu. Can you read this, please? Yes, Prabhu. Oh, all uh, right. Prabhu, is that me? Yeah. Okay. Vancha kalpadarubhis kripa sindhu vevicha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo nam. I offer my respectful obeisances unto this Vaishnava devotee of the Lord. They are just like desired trees and can fulfill the desires of everyone. And they are full of compassion for the fallen conditions. Thank you. Continue. Okay. Then one should offer obeisances full for the man and a half for women to Srila Prabhupada, keeping him on the upper left and chant his Pranati Mantra, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya. One should then move towards the deity and offer full prostrated obeisances, keeping the deity on our left side and chant their respective Pranam Mantras. Yeah, so this is as soon as we enter the temple room. Right. First and foremost, <clears throat> wherever we are, we should bow down and offer prayers to all the assembled Vaishnavas. Very important. Yeah. Then you go to Srila Prabhupada, keeping him to your left. Then you go to the deities, keeping them to your left, and offer the prayers mentioned here. If you want to know more details on this Namo Vishnu Padaya prayers, then you can reach out to me or any other devotees and they can tell you. So that is the standard. Now that means I have to go stand up and bend down three times. Sure. <clears throat> as long as we have that strength, do it now. When we get old, we'll regret why didn't I do it. And anyways, in our prayers, Samsara Dava also we say that, Yashas Tri Sandhyam, One Day Guru Shri Charanaravindam. Three times one must offer obeisances to the spiritual master and the Supreme Lord. So it's okay. It's a good exercise. So please try to do that. <coughs> Next. Meditation upon the deity. So now we've offered obeisances and we're going to be looking at the Supreme Lord. Dipali, can you read this, please? Or Sanket Prabhu? Yeah. After offering obeisances to the deities, one should take darshana with great devotion and beg for their mercy. One should not, however, immediately look upon the deities fully in the face. The proper manner in which one should take darshana of the Lord is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam 2.2.13. The process of meditation should begin from lotus feet of lotus feet of the Lord and progress to his smiling face. The meditation should be concentrated upon the lotus feet, then calves, then the thighs, and in this way higher and higher. The more the mind becomes fixed on different parts of the limbs, one after another, the more the intelligence becomes purified. Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport that such meditation will help us get details from sense gratification. The mode of the devotee taking darshana is, Sir, I am your eternal servant. Please let me know how can I serve you? The function of the big deities 
in the temp temples are for giving darshana and usually are the ishta dev ishta devs of the sampradaya so it is quite natural and respectful to see them first there are also other consideration as if there are three altars like the krishna balram mandir in vrindavan sira prabhupad would pay obeisances first at gaur nitai's altar then go to krishna balram's altar and then to sri sri radha shyam sundar while taking darshana one may stand at the sides so that darshana is not obstructed from the other devotees who are sitting the darshan should begin as we face the deities from the left hand corner and move progressively deity by deity right hand corner yeah. to the right hand corner so very important that once you're done with the obeisances when you're coming in front of the deities just just don't look straight at the eyes of the deities on the face or the jewelry he's wearing the dress he's wearing the flowers they're putting on and start you know generally finding faults uh, oh the pujari has not placed this properly hasn't put the durban right no first start with your prayers start with your with the feet up as shrimad bhagavatam explains then if you are you have those eyes to find that beauty in the lord and you see certain mistakes here and there then you can see those things but first take your time and free obeisances uh, pay uh, take the the proper way of darshan like for example in our center when sometimes we come the deities are still getting ready right they are behind uh, this divider and they're still getting ready you're still inside you've come in you're doing all your other chores set up this that but once the screen is gone and the deities are now ready and giving your darshan their darshan we should pause everything and bow down and offer our obeisances again and take nice darshan of the lord okay next slide talks about how to sit yeah these are all one may think and a lot of the points i've removed from here because when i was reading them i was like scratching my head really this is what people do that it has to be mentioned mentioned here so a lot of the things points have been taken off and some are common sense that we sometimes miss so while sitting uh, let's say vijay prabhu can you read this Yes, sir. Uh, Hare Krishna. Krishna. While sitting, one should not expose one's feet to the deities or point them at the spiritual master, Tulsi Devi, etc. The feet should always be covered. One should, as far as possible, avoid sitting with one's back to the deities or the Vyasasana. However, the layout of the temple may at times restrict us in the following in uh, following us in following this principle one should not spread one's legs before the deities one should not sit before the deities holding one's ankles elbows or knees please see in illustration one should avoid neck exercising falling asleep while sitting before the deities during class we should avoid chanting especially when sitting right in front of the speaker be conscious of your surrounding in a full room offer your seat to new people elders etc make space for others to sit hari krishna yeah so click, click on next so we have uh, here for example here some is a picture of how not to sit with holding uh, your legs that's the proper posture and and also uh, this is a proper posture or, or on the chair so it's it's important to again it goes back to us being conscious always remember krishna never forget krishna so krishna is in front how can i sit with my feet facing him or or the devotees uh so uh, uh the other thing is that uh, you know when we are falling asleep and and sitting in the class especially sitting in right in front of of, of the speaker it's like uh, the speaker will start doubting their own class that you know my class is like like right now i don't know if everybody's awake or sleeping or or what at least i don't see closed eyes but if i did it would really demotivate me like oh my god like my, my i i shouldn't be giving any lectures next time because people fall asleep in my class eh? and then uh, also chanting i've seen many times devotees make this mistake i was in one program where jaitwita maharaj was speaking and there was this one mataji was sitting in the front and she was chanting uh, not audibly but her fingers were moving she's chanting in her mind and she's also hearing the class so she's doing two things at a time So Maharaj paused and said, uh, "Hare Krishna, Mataji. 
Either you can chant or listen to my class. She took the bead bag and put it aside. So that generally happens when uh, we have not finished our rounds and we don't have time. So we take this one hour of lecture as the best time because only one person is talking and my mind will be so occupied that I don't even know when I finish my rounds. So let me finish my rounds at that time. That ch chanting is not counted. And being conscious of the surroundings, especially like in our center, we have chairs in the back, we sit in the front. When new people come, we have to be focused. When when elderly people come, when somebody who's pregnant comes, etc., like the somebody who's handicapped, we have to offer. This is a basic etiquette. A Vaishnava should always have. Even common people have. So when Krishna is watching all this, right? When the program's going, Krishna is watching. He's not just a stone. We are singing, dancing, and offering prasadam to Krishna. Krishna is watching each and every moment of every devotees. And if we become complacent, then Krishna will not really be pleased with, with us. But if he sees that this person is going an extra mile, and he's always conscious of the guests in my temple, Krishna's temple, then Krishna showers his extra glance on that devotee. All right, so next we have talking, talking the class. So Sakri Kaur, would you like to read? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Sure. Talking in front of the deities, one should not talk loudly, quarrel, chastise anyone, speak harshly to others or speak angrily, praise anyone else, Speak ill names, criticize the demigods, indulge in prajalpa or mundane talks. One may speak in front of the deities to guests and devotees if it helps in preaching or enhancing their Krishna consciousness. But all other talks should be conducted outside the temple. So, Again, very basic things, but it does happen. I remember years ago once, because of some quarrel, a group of devotees started fighting in the temple room in front of the deities, calling out names. It just pretty much, it got pretty hot. I wasn't there that night, but I'd heard about it. But in the rest of their lives, I've seen such challenges and difficulties they have faced in their spiritual life. And that I see is all a reflection of offending the devotees and speaking ill in front of the deities. Lots of struggle they went through. So we have to be careful. We have to remember these things. Are we ready to take the consequences? It's not so difficult to follow this, but it's important that we don't become familiar with the deities, especially in, in the temple room. Outside the temple room, it's one thing, but sometimes we, you know, devotees would laugh loudly, uh, talk loudly, uh, quarrels and ch you know, generally it's usually less. But even laughing without, you know, considering that the Lord is present for something mundane, we have to be very, very careful. Next, dress and appearance. Aradhya Radhika, would you like to read? A devotee's clothing must be simple, clean, and distinctive as to remind people of Krishna. When coming to the temple, devotees should dress as follows. Men, dhoti and kurta, preferably white for grihasthas. Women, saris, gopi dresses. For both men and women, clothing should be simple and not fashionable and opulent. Yet the clothes must be neat and presentable. Unnecessary items like perfumes and various forms of cosmetics and makeup should be avoided. Simplicity in dress is very important for a Vaishnava, whether in the temple or outside. One must try to wear fresh clothes. Avoid wearing previous day's clothes, especially after using the bathroom to pass stool. Lord Chaitanya said that a Vaishnava is one who, when seen, reminds one of Krishna. Essence. Krishna should be the center of attraction, not me. Yeah, this, this is a very, very important 
area that Srila Prabhupada stressed a lot to his devotees, especially in the early days. And we must remember that when we go to the temple, as we said, we are not taking titles and positions. We have to go in a humble mood as a dasan udas. A servant doesn't dress like the master. The, the, the servant doesn't overdress than the master, right? Have you ever seen any servant who's who looks like a master and the master looks like the servant? Very rarely, hardly. So the idea is not that when I go to the temple, people look at me at how I look, you know, how my dress is today. They they glorify me, they take my pictures, and then I tell them, please send it to me so I can put it on Facebook and see how many likes I got. Take Krishna's pictures and put. How many times we go on Sundays, take Krishna's pictures and say, look how beautiful Radha Sham Sundar and Nima Nita looked. Let me put it on Facebook today. So the goal should not, in fact, if if people are getting attracted or distracted by looking at me instead of looking at the deities, then we've done a great disservice. Great disservice. Because we are seeking attention. And sometimes it may not even be consciously or knowingly. But we have to be aware that you know, who's looking at who? Where are people looking at? And we should have such. That's why relationships are so important that if we are well wishes of other devotees and friends, that we are able to tell them, hey, listen, uh, you know, this is not proper. This is not proper. We need to cover properly. Prabhupada always said, high on the top, low on the bottom. One time, uh, a devotee actually approached a Muslim person and says, hey, why do women in your culture are concealed uh, behind a cloth, which also covers the face. And this Muslim gentleman very nicely responded. And he asked a question. He said, if you have a value diamond, which to you is precious and dear, how will you keep it? Will you store it in an old cardboard box, in your backyard rubbish heap? Uh, naturally, you will protect it by putting it safely and securely in place where the untrustworthy can neither see it nor steal it. Then he said, we consider women very important to us. They are the personality behind a happy household and a family. We know that if they flaunt themselves in public, they will be misled. And then the foundation of our society will be ruined. This is exactly in line with how Vaishnava culture is. Unfortunately, in today's uh, days and times, uh, we've forgotten this. And again, this is exactly word to word taken from Vaishnava manual. And there's a lot more that I've removed. So if you feel that this is strong, this is nothing actually. So wearing Vaishnava attire, at least on Sundays, in clean dress, it pleases the Lord very much. It gives a different impression to ourselves. When you go shopping, you might go to shopping to a very good, a rich, opulent store. And if you go dressed flimsy, you're not going to get much attention, isn't it? If you go to your workplace, a professional place, dressed in a very, very casual manner, you're not going to get so much mark of respect. So according to time, place, circumstance, so our time and place in the temple means Vaishnava attire. Now, what does it take? It just, the problem is most of the time, it's not having proper planning. We By the time we realize it's, I have to leave in the next 20 minutes for the temple and I don't have my clothes ready. One who's serious prepares their clothing in the morning hours, the days before, and keeps it very much, very nicely ready. So having a proper appearance is very important. Next slide talks about Tilaka and uh, Ashish Pachori Prabhu, if you would like to read. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Tilaka represents the lotus feet of Vishnu. One should decorate the body with Vaishnava Tilaka at 12 places after taking a bath. If not 12, one should at least uh, put on Vaishnava Tilaka on his forehead. Chen Om Keshavaya Nama while applying. If a devotee applies the marks of the Lord and chants his name, 
the Lord becomes pleased and resides with him. In this way, the material body becomes a sanctified temple of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada advised devotees in New York to try to avoid spilling liquid. Gopi Chandana, while mixing it in the palm of the hand, do not waste it. It is precious. If it, if it, is, falling, if it is falling on the ground, immediately clear the area. Yes. Next slide. Thank you. Continue. A person, uh, sorry. A person who daily wears Gopi Chandana Tilaka attains the pious results of daily bathing in all sacred rivers. A hundred times more sacred is the dust of Gopi Chandana. Please know that Gopi Chandana is equal to the dust of Vrindavana. Even if in the past he has committed hundreds of sins, if a person wears Gopi Chandana Tilka, then Yamraja cannot take him away. How then can Yamraja's messengers touch him? Sri Garga Samhita, Kanto 6, Chapter 15. Yes. So it is important and it's only for our own benefit a small chandan, gopi chandan, which takes less than 30 seconds to apply, but the result of it is unimaginable. Why would one not want to wear it? Especially I've seen devotees who keep coming for years and years and they still do not put on Vaishnava Tilak. It is said that Yamraja's messengers don't touch that devotee Baba. Yamraj's messengers, Yamadutas don't touch a devotee who wears tilaka. So it's not only when we go to the temple, first thing in the morning after taking bath, we should offer, put on Gopi Chandan. Put it on light, even if you have to go to work. Put it very light. I've gone to work with Gopi Chandan literally showing on my forehead and interacting with my colleagues. Nobody said, go home or go and remove this and come back. I went to the bathroom and I realized my Gopi Chandan, I can see it. I didn't even, was not even conscious about it. The only reason is the difference between those who put it and don't put it is the understanding of the significance and importance of it. Because every one of us, if we know how important it is to get up next morning and go to work and do my job and earn a living so I can support my family, they'll do it. As soon as we understand the importance of this, We'll do it. Now, the second thing would be, I don't have Gopi Chandan or I don't know how to apply. That is the easy part. But if you have it, every morning, apply it. Before going to bed, apply it. Most of you work from home, put it on, leave it. You don't have to keep, you know, as soon as it fades off, you don't have to go and put it again so that Yamaraj can see it. Well, once put on, Yamaraj can see it the rest of the day until you've taken shower. So don't worry about that part. I'll tell you a story around this, a true story. There was one king, Dirga Bahu, from Sindhu Desh, who was so cruel and sinful and addicted to prostitutes. He had murdered 100 brahmanas and he had killed 100 pregnant women. Just imagine this. Okay? And uh, one time when he went on uh, hunting uh, with his entourage, he, he, killed, he had been killing thousands of deers. That was nothing. But one day he killed a cow also while hunting. And uh, no remorse for it. So when he was hunting during that time, when they were deep into the forest, one of his, his minister was very greedy and wanted to have his kingdom. He murdered the king with the help of other soldiers. And they made it sound as if he was killed by an animal. He died. The Yamaduta showed up. The Yamaduta picked him up, took him to Yamraj. Yamraj went to his minister and uh, Chitragupta, and uh, he said, uh, please check his records. And Chitragupta opened his file and he says, oh my goodness, who have you brought here? Uh, he said, uh, Yamraj is like, what does he deserve? 
He says, well, he deserves to be going into Kumbhika, Kumbhipaka hell. This Kumbhipaka hell is 8,000 miles in radius with filled with boiling oil. And he needs to go there until the sun and the moon shine. So the Yamadutas take him there and uh, this king is yelling and shouting to release him, but he's thrown into this hot oil uh, hell. And as soon as he's thrown in the oil, the oil cools down. And the Yamudus does in a shock. What happened here? Did you turn off the switch or something? The boiler is off or what? Guys, come on, take a look. He says, no, how can it turn off so quickly? It was just hot. It'll still take time to warm down. But this one just turned cool and he's not even yelling. He's actually enjoying in, in, in here. But get him out. And they take him back to Yamadutas and Chitragupta and they are all bewildered. Like, what happened? Check again, Ch Ch Chitragupta. Is there some virus in your file, you know, in your computer? Uh, has he done some good deed? Is this the cause? He looks again. He says, no, I just did a full analysis. I just ran the virus software and there is no bug. He is sinful. But they are still deep bewildered. What happened? At that time, Vyasadev comes and they ask Vyasadev that this is what happened. We are not sure what's going on. And at that time, Vyasadev narrated, let me tell you something that you don't know. That the place where this king died, somebody had by mistake dropped some Gopichandan powder. And when he died, his body touched, fell on the Gopichandan. And because of dying with Gopichandan on him, he became purified. And he's free from all his sins. Right away, Yamaraj, call Vaikuntha Airways. He called Vaikuntha Airways. He had the king sit on it and he sent him first class back to Vaikuntha Lok. This is the significance of putting a Vaishnava Tilaka. So devotees, give up your old habits. Don't be adamant. I'm not going to put, especially after this class. Just be humble. Just put it on. If you do it, your family, your spouse, your children, everybody else will do. If you are following it, people don't want to see how much you know. People want to see how much you're practicing. Yeah? Next slide. Kanti Mala. Jaidrapati Mataji, would you like to read? Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yeah. Kanthimala, Tulsi neck beads. All the devotees who are initiated must wear Kanthimala. Devotees who are not initiated but have a sincere desire to take up Krishna consciousness may also wear it. It is advisable not to wear beads if one is not following the four regulative principles. Tulsi beads worn around the neck indicate a devotee's surrender to the Lord. And therefore, a person wearing tulsi beads around his neck is dear to the Lord. However, a person is an offender if he wears tulsi neck beads simply to imitate a Vaishnava but is not seriously trying to surrender to the Lord. The neck bead, beads is worn permanently for the beads that one from bad dreams, accidents, attacked by weapons, and, and the servants of Yamaraj. Upon seeing the Tulsi Mala, the Yamadutas flee like uh, leaves scattered by wind. Yeah, just see, just by seeing Tulsi Mala. So, so much significance. Somebody once told me that, you know, I get allergies. When I put on Tulsi Mala, I get some allergies. Okay, so don't put it like this. Don't tie it to your skin. Keep one round. Keep it loose. When there is no skin left, Yamadutas come, they tear your skin away. Skinny nahi rahega to kya karenge? So while the skin is there, have it touched to your body. Put it on. Very important. Everyone should wear. Once one Maharaj was asked this question, Maharaj, if somebody takes eggs or meat, can they wear Tulsi Mala? Maharaj said one thing. Give me some praman. Give me some references where it says, in the Shastra, that one should not wear Tulsi Mara if one is eating eggs or 
like that. So his answer was, put it first. Once you respect Tulsi and you put it, automatically you'll start giving up. You would not want to let anything that is not dear to Krishna go through your throat. But if you keep waiting that one day I will stop eating and then I will, that one day will not come, one day Yamaraj will come. So before that happens, put it on. Not because always we don't need to do things because out of fear. Some things we need to do out of love for Krishna also. If you do everything to keep Yamadutas away, then Maya will find ways for you to remove it also. It could break and get loose and Maya and Yamadutas will come and catch. But do it because your Acharyas, because our Acharyas are telling us to do it. Do it with love and respect. It is very easily available. It's not expensive. Many of us have wear, you know, diamond and gold stuff, which is so expensive to work for, work like crazy to even earn money and buy those. This is so easily available. Why hesitate? Put it on. Tomorrow, there is no, you know, later. Now, start putting it. Don't feel shy. I used to feel like, you know, when I go to the office, I would like try my best to like almost cover like this, you know. I don't want anybody to see. No, forget it. The Jews come with their hat. The Muslims come with their, their own. You can tell it's Muslim. People come with tattoos of such kind. People come with haircuts where you feel like, you know, maybe the barber forgot to cut over here. Why feel afraid and shy of this? This is our dog tag. Put it on. Kantimana. This is Krishna protecting us, telling, reminding us. Whenever you feel something here, it reminds us of Krishna. Next slide. Cleanliness and hygiene. Gaurav Prabhu? Wear fresh clothes in the temple, nicely ironed. Clean the area after you have finished prasadam. If you see prasadam lying around on the floor, pick it up so no one steps on it. Do not touch anyone or any anything after honoring prasadam. Wash your hands with water after eating. Do not use the kitchen sink. One should take bath after passing stool and only then enter the temple hall. In situations where you cannot take a bath, avoid going into the temple room and touching any devotees or devotional items. One should not enter the temple after visiting a cremate or after touching a dead body. One must first take proper bath and then enter. During their menstrual period, ladies may visit the temple, but they may not perform any item of deity worship like arti, dressing, cooking, garlands, or any other work that requires their presence in the deity room or kitchen, or any work that is directly connected to the Deities, stitching their clothes, etc. Avoid physical contact with anyone who is or will be involved in the service of deities. Do not offer water to Tulsi Devi. Under all circumstances, chanting on one's japa weed should continue. Yes. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Cleanliness is gone. It is one of the pillars of religion. So we have to be very, very careful about this. Um, especially in our setting, right? We take prashadam and after prashadam is done, when we've used our hands, first thing, first and foremost thing of all services to go and wash our hands in the bathroom. Not in the kitchen. Because in our kitchen, we, we use utensils that are used to serve the deities. So we should never, because it's very close, it may be, oh, either I may kar leta. but every time we should go and wash it outside. Now one may see somebody go and wash. At that time also, we should not make assumptions that this person just came from eating prashadan and washing. Maybe they were serving, they were serving prashadan, that's why they're washing there. Somebody may have just, you know, got their hands dirty or you know, something, something else, which doesn't necessarily require them. If you've touched your fingers to your mouth, right, then one needs to go and wash. 
but there may be other situations. So sometimes, you know, same rule doesn't apply. You know, somebody saw me washing hands, but actually, you know, what happened? I went into the closet while I was getting something out from the shelf, something sticky, I touched. That's why I went to the bathroom, uh, to the kitchen. But somebody saw me and they said, hmm, he gave a class that day, but look at him. He's washing. But Baba, I didn't eat yet. I haven't eaten yet. So we should be very careful in making assumptions and coming to conclusions also. Um, and again, fresh clothes, very important. Again, like I said, planning is what it takes. Um, and uh, yes, after passing stool, it's very, this is, this is, people sometimes don't know. And I, we see that uh, people want to serve prashadam. We want to engage many people in serving prashadam. Even while preparing deity plates, uh, in temples, uh, only pujaris are allowed in the altar kitchen. But because we are a preaching center, uh, that rule doesn't necessarily apply yet. But still, we have to be respectful and we should try and let the pujari or the cooking lead or the cooking team do all that. Because if we do any of these things, knowingly or unknowingly, we are going to take the aparad on ourselves. So we must avoid that. Sometimes I've seen where somebody is just smoked outside and comes in and they start helping with setting up prashadam or bhoga plates. Are Baba, who's going to be getting the aparad? Who's going to commit this? You know, it's you only. So do not get familiar with the deities, the devotees, and the process. If I'm not clean, I'm not clean, period. Get ourselves qualified to be in that position where we will be able to do this type of service. Then we can do it. But otherwise, these are very specially pujari items. Let the pujaris handle. The bhoga plates, let the pujaris. If they ask you, oh, can you please carry this for me? You carry. Otherwise, ask yourself, did I take a shower at home? Did I go to the gym in the morning? Did I go for a walk? Did I Was I sweating and then I dressed up and came, I came here? Then we should avoid. But okay, I, I took a bath and I'm very clean. I'm very fresh. I have not touched the garbage cans here, nothing. Then we can do. It's okay. But generally wait for the pujaris to do that. I remember the, once, twice it happened where I had to go to the toilet. I had to use the toilet, but I did not enter the temple room after that. How can I? Because people are going to come and greet me, welcome me. There's so many things I have to wrap up, touch. You don't want to do that. It was okay. Some people, key people knew why I'm not entering the temple. And they respected that. And that's the setting we must have. Okay. So I'll pause here now. Uh, there were two more slides I wanted to cover, but it's also uh, getting late. So I'll pause here and see if anybody has any uh, question. And feel free to ask. There's no, no foolish question here. Anyone? Was it helpful? Because we have a lot more that will get covered in the coming weeks. Prabhuji, I have a question. Um, you talked about... Uh... The order, right? Like how for shipping, Radha Shams on the last and then Guru a second. So uh, what's the importance of that order or like why it has to be at that way? Very good question. So we are approaching the Lord through the spiritual master. So first we take the blessings and offer obeisances to the spiritual master. Then we go to the Supreme Lord. Okay. See? Just like if you were to go and meet a dignitary, you would first meet their secretary or somebody who then takes you to that dignitary. Similar. Anybody else? Was this helpful? Did you learn anything new, anyone? was very helpful from pretty helpful i came to know a few things that i was not aware of before it was actually a reminder for me as well yes prabhu i was saying the same thing that it is definitely worth revisiting all these uh, rules and this and that so it again freshen up in our mind that we should be taking care of if we're doing it anything that we should be refrained from then on. Yes. And rule number one is that 
do unto others as others would want to do to you. So always think, the person who can meditate on that as much as possible will will have Vaishnava etiquette or any other etiquettes under their under their arm. Because they're always thinking that you know, if, if, if I was in that situation, I would not like that. So why am I doing this to this person? I would not like my child to be treated like this. So why am I treating somebody else's child like that? I wouldn't want this to be done in my house. So why am I treating Prabhupada's house like this? Ashish Prabhu? Uh, yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. So I have a question um, um, regarding how to um, actually uh, go in front of deities and pray, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a process, go from left to right, right? And look at from the feet and go above from there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But uh, one day when I was listening to the lectures, um, I don't remember the name of Prabhuji. Um, he said that there are multiple ways we worship our uh, God, right? It could be as a parent, guru, or as a kid, right? What's a leprem, right? Mm -hmm. So if, say, um, somebody is coming and having a what's a leprem, um, would you still suggest the same process? Yeah, so so current we all are in, in the Dasya Bhav, in the mood of a servant of a servant of servant. We may think we are in Dasya Bhav, or maybe let's say for argument's sake, one may be treating uh, as as a child, one mother, you know, taking care of Gopalji. But yes, the certain norms are still like that. You know, unless one is that at that Uttam Adhikari level where child means what is Vatsalya Bhav, right? You are you're caring for the child all the time. If, if one is genuinely doing that or not throughout the day? Or is it just, you know, mere baal gopal hai, mere baal gopal hai. But baal gopal hai, then there's a lot more that goes behind it too. But yes, generally still, the process is still the same. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and this is more relevant to bigger temples. There are big, big altars, left, middle and right. In our temple, we in our center, we have a very, very tiny altar. In one shot only, we can stand in one place only, we can take their darshan. Okay. Anyone else? I okay. will ask one more, Prabhuji. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, about the tilkas, right? Uh, there are 12 uh, types of tilaks, right? Or marks. Um, like if somebody is single, you can't apply everywhere in the body, right? Like even behind the body. How would that work? So in that case, just one is enough? Uh, I'm sorry, you said one may not be able to apply? Now, they like on all 12 different places, right? That suggests it. Uh, like uh -huh. even, even behind, uh, you have yeah. to put at no, one three can. different one, one can. I mean, if are you asking physically, is it possible to do that? Yeah, yeah, physically. Mm -hmm. uh, unless one has an issue with like their arm or something, yes, it is. It's, it's not difficult to do that. It just takes practice. It may take time. But uh, at least the uh, recommendation is that we start with putting it on your forehead first. At least do that. And mm -hmm. then as gradually one gets serious, because the body is considered a temple, the Paramatma is within. And uh, that's why we're decorating this body with these different marks, calling different names. And then also when one takes initiations, a Brahman initiation, then one also has a Shika, right? Mm -hmm. In the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, yeah. That represents the flag on the temple. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And it's not tough, you know. If you need a Gopi Chandra, let me know. I'll get you one and how to put on. Yeah, I, I would need one. So uh, next time when I see you, Prabhuji, uh, I would need some guidance around that. Definitely. Anybody else? Hare Krishna. My Hare name Krishna. is Meet. I'm yeah. I'm just new. So I have a question about the story when you were saying about uh, the Gopi Chandan. Yes. Um, about that person who create, you know, who uh, did a lot of atrocities and uh, still got liberation. Mm -hmm. So, how is that justifying when how how a person who who's create, you know, has done so many sins, but just touching the the chandan uh, gets liberated? What is the what is the well, what is the significance of that? What is the like? How yeah. is that possible? Yeah. Like I think of it as you know, 
when you're just when you you know your bad karma your good karma you know your how do you justify that he just i mean it's kind of like unfair i i would i'm looking at it like that so how right. do you yeah thank you so that for that one needs to understand the importance of gopi chandan very good point you made because if it was just you know if it was just some other powder turmeric powder which is very ayurveda says turmeric powder heals you know so one touched turmeric powder and got liberated you know that doesn't happen what is the significance i would want to know what is the significance of turmeric powder so gopi chandan is such that uh, when krishna one time he had uh, in a nutshell krishna had severe headache uh, that is the past time and uh, and and narad muni comes to me says krishna what happened today you look sad you never sad he said i'm i have a severe headache so it's okay how can this be relieved uh, do you need some prescription drug do you need what kind of you know he says no uh, you know i think only a dust from a uh feet of my devotee can take this off so narad muni goes around he sees meets many devotees of krishna including lord shiva lord brahma and many others and all of them refuse to give him the dust from their feet he says how can i give this to the to lord and master and then he lands up in vrindavan and vrindavan the gopis are there near the yamuna they are playing they are they are swimming they are dancing and he says hey, listen you know your krishna is having a severe headache and he said that if somebody gives my devotee gives dust from their lotus feet i will take that in my head and that will solve my problem and the gopis right away they start rolling and you know taking dust from their feet and filling up uh, narad muni with full cart full of you know dust and then uh, they say are you crazy you are okay i mean you put this on the lord's head you know you'll go to hell he says we don't care if we go to hell but as long as our lord his headache is gone we are ready to go to hell so that 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 mud from the river from the yamuna ganges area that was taken to krishna and given and krishna was so pleased with the devotees just like yamaduta yamaraj whose sister is Yam, yamuna devi he's so pleased that on bhai vi dwij bhai bij day he says i give you a boon yamuna that any sinner no matter what if he comes and takes dip in your water on bhai bij day my yamadutas will never see him so the significance is so much and it's not so easy try to understand me that it's not so easy that you know i'm going to go and kill around and then at the last i'm going to carry in my bag a, a gopi chandan i'll just put it ta -da -ta, liberated it's not going to happen this is by chance it happened and, and because of such significance it is that we it is for us to understand that the importance is so much but if we knowingly do it like you know if i kill somebody and put it it will not have an effect because the intentions were different okay oh okay yeah that makes sense actually yes absolutely it's like it's unknowingly is when it's it's, un it. it's unknowingly or knowingly you know keeping or on one realizing one one's mistake i have done this mistake now i will not do this going forward and then continues following the the process or what the acharyas have said then also one will sarva dharman paritijya maam ekam sharanam raja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo moksha shyami maasu cha krishna promises this but then we have to follow that instruction thank you prabhu yeah anybody else okay thank you very much and we will see you again next wednesday same time 8:30 hari krishna Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Again, as um, Hare a very important topic. So this Hare Sunday Krishna. we have uh, Mahaprabhu Kirtan too, speaking on this Sunday. So find the um, everyone can join our temple program. Um, so we'll see you on Sunday in the temple. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare